Well, NVIDIA posting that big earnings beat and CEO Jensen Wong saying in the release that AI has, quote, hit the tipping point. Now we're talking to one AI, AI company that uh, NVIDIA has a vested interest in. The chip giant recently announcing it poured $3.7 million into SoundHound AI. Joining us now, co-founder and CEO of SoundHound, that is Kayvon Mohajer. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate Thank you for it, having Kayvon. me. So that tipping point uh, comment, I think, caught a lot of people's attention. What does it mean to you and what does it mean to your business? And do you agree that we're, we've sort of reached that tipping point? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people, when the big bang of generative AI happened last year, some people thought, is this a short lasting hype? And uh, some people like Jensen said, this is, you know, this is bigger than the internet. And we agree with that. Uh, so if you look at uh, what's, we, what we think is going to come next is the wave of uh, experiences that people are going to use generative AI for to create a lot of value, right? So with the analogy is, iOS and Android were the big bang. And then for more than 10 years, apps and apps and apps. And some of those apps were new experiences for the first time, created billions of dollars of value. And uh, we expect the same thing will happen with generative AI. So years of value creation and experiences. And that's what SoundHand does. And, and Kevin, let me ask you just about that NVIDIA stake. I'm just interested to hear more about you know, how that came about, Kevin, and, and what do you plan now to do with that money? How does SoundHound put that to work? Uh, yeah, so we've known NVIDIA for a number of years, and they are a great company. We respect them a lot, and they specialize in, they create the infrastructure for AI, and Samhan puts that infrastructure to good use. Uh, so the synergy is very clear, and uh, the amount of investment is not as big as we are a public company and well capitalized. Uh, but um, what it does for us is two things, uh, validation, an alliance, right? And we've attracted a number of strategic investors like Hyundai and Oracle and Vizio and Samsung uh, have invested in us. Uh, and it's validation because they bring their own experts to look at our technology and our vision. And when they take the equity, it checks the box. And uh, alliance because it brings us closer together. And we are able to turn some of those into really big customers like Hyundai. Uh, Kevin, another question though, you know, these reports, I saw Kayvon and you saw them, the options volume and, and sound in, in your company kind of surge here in the days, like I guess leading up to NVIDIA's filing, you know, announcing that stake. That, that can be the thing, Kayvon, a kind of thing that regulators sometimes do get interested in. What can you tell us about that? Uh, just speculation, and I think it's wrong. Uh, well, first of all, who, who knows? But uh, if you look at, they looked at some companies that NVIDIA invested in, and some, some volume went up uh, before the announcement. But if you look at all the other AI companies, like Big Bear, their volume went up too. So I don't, I, I think it was unrelated to NVIDIA. Yeah, but to your point, there has been this, we were just talking about it with, with Josh Schaefer a few moments ago, this enthusiasm, maybe even this mania that people just, you know, are falling over themselves to invest in companies like yours. Now, you say that this is bigger than the internet, that this is a huge opportunity. So is something like SoundHound undervalued then at these levels, if that's the case? Well, we uh, obviously we think long-term, and I'll, I'll tell you what you're doing, and, and mm -hmm. yeah, you can judge. Uh, so we, we made two, in, two in predictions, and we are focusing on those. The first one is that AI customer service will be as necessary to every business as Wi-Fi and electricity. So you create a new business, you sign up for internet, you sign up for electricity, you sign up for AI customer service, and we provide AI customer service for businesses. Uh, the second prediction is that uh, we prefer a voice as the interface to devices, to physical products, right? So I have a three-year-old daughter who knows how to speak. Uh, she's going around the house and talking to everything. Uh, not everything is listening to her, but um, she knows how to speak. I still have to teach her how to type and use a mouse and everything, but speaking is a natural way. And the reason we're not talking to devices yet is because the technology wasn't ready. Now, because of generative AI, it is ready. And fortunately for product creators, a microphone is all they need. It's a very inexpensive small microphone is all they need to enable their devices with the most natural interface. So we are focusing on that too. So we are enabling cars and TVs and IoT devices. We are in millions of devices. And we are powering customer service. We are in 10,000 locations with 100,000 in our pipeline with 30 million businesses that can be enabled. That's a $100 billion opportunity. It's an opportunity that a lot of others are chasing also, right? You do have competitors in the market who are working on this same problem. What makes sound how different? Is it the data set that you're drawing from, or what exactly is it? So there's the big tech, and there's the smaller newcomers, right? So we've been in this for 20 years. Uh, it's a vision that we came up with in Stanford University dorm room, and we've been pursuing it for a long time. Uh, so the, the, when the generative AI revolution happened, the big tech had to go and build their own. They're not going to go and 
use an OpenAI API, right? So, and that's gonna take them a couple of years. So they're gonna give us time to go faster. And the smaller players, um, generative AI is not that easy to make it work, right? So it's not a plug and play. We have to do a ton of software engineering to reduce hallucination, to make them do the right thing, to go from a demo to a live to a live product, and we are really good at that, and that that gives us the advantage. Kayvon, okay, I'm interested. Does your product work better? And by better, I mean, you know, does it respond more quickly and more accurately than the voice engines a lot of our viewers will be familiar with from from big tech, from from Google and Amazon and Apple? Yeah, we actually have, we have been for uh, for a long time uh, known to be the the AI that had handles more complex queries. So like you, you can ask. You know, show me Asian restaurants, but not Chinese, not Japanese, maybe we had Chinese food yesterday, that are open after 9 p.m. On, on Thursdays and have more than three stars and are within walking distance of the Space Needle, right? So we can actually handle queries like that. Uh, and now that we've integrated generative AI, you can ac actually have an endless conversation with it, ask for recommendation and opinions and gift ideas and go back and forth between them. And we were very quick to uh, integrate it. We ran a pilot with one of our customers called Stellantis in Europe. The results of the pilot was incredible. The user satisfaction went through the roof. Uh, usage went up multiple folds. And yesterday we announced we are the first voice AI vendor to partner with a car company to go live in production. This is not a pilot in 18 countries. Like all of the things that we're discussing with AI, especially with images, for example, there's also this sort of uneasiness, right? That you're interacting with something that is not real or not another person and that there are certain pitfalls of that. How do you think about that issue? Uh, yeah, so um, there are a lot of issues, like the hallucination is an issue, and um, um, copyright, and ethics, and all that, and we take those very seriously. The things that we focus on, um, uh, hallucination is the most important one, and we worked a lot to reduce that, almost to negligible, and we're very proud of that. Uh, I think the bigger risk in AI is not embracing it fast enough, right? So there are companies that are kind of disoriented and they're waiting and seeing and, and uh, are, or they just want to check a box, let's just make an announcement. I think this is a moment to create a lot of value and the fast movers are going to be the winners.